This is all rainforest country, tremendous biodiversity here. This property alone supports about 50 species that are on the Biodiversity Conservation Act as either vulnerable, endangered or critically endangered. We've been working very hard over the last 10 years or so to restore the bush and re-establish a, a solid corridor of native vegetation. We just felt indestructible up here. We were just going to have rainforest from one end to the other. But the serious fires of 2019 have changed all that. And now we have what the effects of these La Niñas. The rainfall we received this year is, was just extraordinary. 13 landslips on this property alone. You know, you've got a landslip, there's 100 year old trees which we don't even know where they've gone. Forests have been wiped out and you've got all this bare soil and rock. What's a bit trickier to see is what's germinating. So we've got a whole sway of weeds germinating, but we've also got a whole sway of native trees germinating. So weed control in this situation is the most efficient way to work these areas. But our biggest asset is Mother Nature. She wants to be a forest here, so all we're trying to do is just give her a little bit of a helping hand, especially in these initial periods. This is a fantastic project and local land services have come to the party quickly. You know, there's that rapid response which is so important. We're following up work that was done in the last days of Catchment Management Authority, which included seven hectares of lantana, which is now a rainforest. The work that's been going on over the last 10, 15 years, as well as building community capacity, even more importantly, has built community will. So having people like LLS come along, providing opportunities for people who wouldn't have that opportunity otherwise, it all adds to the whole greater project. We are in the headwaters of the very flood that took out Lismore and all those other communities downstream. The creeks are lined with lowland subtropical rainforest, which is an endangered ecological community. The main impetus is to encourage the regeneration of the native plants. And if there are weeds competing with that regeneration, that process can't work effectively. If we can deal with weeds here, it means that there's much less weed infested material going down the creeks to other parts of the whole catchment. And the fact that we have this funding from LALS, which will enable that to happen, it's just going to work out as an excellent outcome in terms of stopping a problem. Collectively, really enjoy the outcomes that we get from doing these projects, particularly when we have support from someone like LLS. What we've been able to do here is provide some investments. So we were assisting them to recover from the bushfire and now we found some extra funds and we're assisting them to recover from the floods because that is now their number one focus and the whole landscape has changed and now we have to work out how on earth we're going to assist the uh, landscape to recover from this new disaster. So it's the local experts coming up with the solutions to problems that we have never faced before. And it's that collaboration that we're really pleased to be funding and we're pretty certain that we're going to get the best chance of a good result. It's the landholders, the contractors, community bodies and funding bodies are all working intimately together. I just love seeing the, the native animals hopping around in countryside that was just solid weeds. This valley, now there's live birds hopping around in there. Bandicoots, little wallabies that weren't able to use that ground before. So that is so inspiring and I love it. <laughs>